G'day folks. Well, upon, well, let's just say you're going to add to the list of unusual equipment teardowns tonight. Um, you've seen me tear down some weird stuff, so here's a printer for fingernails. And no, I'm not going to be testing it. It doesn't work. Uh, this was given to me by, by Brad, aka V8 Jagnut. Uh, I can't remember what he said. Something about no ink or just not working. So I don't even know where he got it from. I'm not even going to ask. Maybe his missus scored it from somewhere or he found it on the side of the road. But yeah, it didn't come with cables, although it just looks like normal USB and power. Um, obviously, there must be some software to go with it, which I don't have either. But we'll open it up and have a look what's inside and tear it apart. I have found these things on eBay and Alibaba. They're about $1,200 each. But I don't want to spend a heap of money on ink only to find out it doesn't work. Because it has seen a fair bit of use. So, yeah, without knowing exactly what's wrong with it and not really having any time to uh, deal with it, it's just going to go as junk. It'll get torn apart. Um, well, basically, I've, it's been in the shed on the floor for a while and I've tripped over it for the second time and I've broken my neck, so it's time for it to uh, get broken down. I'd rather just chuck this thing out. I mean, if it's going to go outside, it's not going to get stripped down anyway, so I'll strip it down before it goes, and then we get back into our current project. All right, well, this thing's a piece of work and a half. You know, when I first opened it up or looked in the front, I saw the uh, 26 on the cartridge, and I thought, hmm, that looks like a Lexmark cartridge. Well, it is. This whole mechanism is butchered out of a Lexmark printer. Probably the same kind as I, what I paid... I don't know, 100 bucks for in the early 2000s. Uh, it's remarkably the same. I mean, the cartridges are exactly the same as what I've replaced plenty of times in Lexmark stuff. They're actually getting you... I might still be able to find them, but I'm not going to spend 50 or $60 on cartridges just to find out if this thing works or not. Uh, yeah, it even says it on the uh, board there. It's a Lexmark. Uh, what is that? 18K0205 that's what's on that chip I don't know the exact model number yeah I can't tell exactly what printer this came out of but they've attached it to a couple of slides and a stepping motor to give you multi-axis printing it's actually quite interesting it's not the most sturdy of things but considering it's only uh, doing fingernail printing it's actually pretty good yeah, it's on two linear linear slides. That's really neat. You can see why they jacked the price up. It's all this stuff. It's not the $50 printer that's in there. It's the uh, linear slides and the stepping motor and the additional driver required for it. Where are you going? Oh, there we go. There's a driver board. That could be quite handy, actually. You've got two optical sensors. That one there. Where are you going? This thing's going to be good for parts. I've got two linear slides, they're really handy. I've got two... What are you? You're taking power. What? Why are you taking power off there? That's 240 volt. Oh no, you're going to the front. I was going to say, 240 volt to there. That's coming off the printer. Oh, okay, it's a little bodge board. That goes to the main printer. What was that originally? Oh, that was the... Um, I see what they've done. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the paper advanced stepper motor. I knew something was missing. That's the motor. That's what pulls the paper through the printer. So they've got the paper advanced stepper motor working off that. It works on the same principle, but instead of moving the paper, it moves the head. Wow. <laughs> so that's what they've done. Whether or not that board came out of the Lexmark or not, I don't know. I haven't pulled one to bits. More than likely, it's a bodge board because the printer wouldn't need something like this. Not for paper, um, not for moving paper through it. It'd have another different sensors with little flags on them. Or it is po it's quite possible, yeah, um, a board mounted up above the paper path. That second USB is for the camera. The software obviously gives you a camera to select where the fingernails are. Like you get the get your 
subjects to hold their hand still inside it and then select this one, this one, and this one and uh, use that so you've got a backlight and a micro USB camera in there it's all hot glued in like everything in this thing uh, miniature power supply that's going to be cool it'll be handy what's it doing it's got yeah, V plus V minus um, AC input where's the uh, the um, labels probably on the heatsink side We'll find out what that is. Yeah, that's uh, very standard Lexmark stuff. Oh yeah, that head looks like it's seen better days. Yeah, color 26. And black is usually 17. Yep, 26, 17. Very, very standard. That's neat. Multi-axis printing. Well, essentially just yeah, hacked up paper um, paper transfer servo. And look at the way they've chopped that out. And just snapped it out of the case. It's all cut off there. Yeah, they've just cut the plastic case out, so I'm guessing there are two little pads in there. Oh no, that's the printhead home position park. Yeah. Printhead parking assembly is still attached somewhat. Wow, they went to a bit of trouble to do this. Again, waste ink, abs absorbent, absorbent pad, completely butchered out of the plastic casing and screwed back in. Uh, yeah, you can see where the other gears were from the uh, paper transfer motor. This um, yellowy greeny uh, electro plated stuff is not from the Lexmark so that that and the board mount all had to be fabricated along with the c normal cabinet and yeah like the tin cabinet and everything's fabricated that's all fabricated sort of what have they done there yeah look at that they've got an, two little brackets little aluminium brackets and uh, it looks like they've they've used every bit of the printer that they possibly could. That's all out of the Lexmark. That belt is probably out of the Lexmark. Although maybe mm, no, maybe they got that timing, those little timing pulley and the idler and the belt separately. I can't see that being in there. Yeah, that is ingenious. I'll give him that much. Huh. I guess I better put some power to it and see what it does. Ah, oh, look, there's something I didn't notice before. It's even got a black light in it. I wonder, why would they have a black light in it? I mean, it's normal printing ink, but what else do they do that requires that? Hmm, maybe there's a base that they paint your nails with first and then it prints or more like you print the uh, design then put some UV sensitive lacquer over the top and then put your hand in again under the black light just to set it off to harden it more than likely because that's just normal printing obviously it wouldn't last long if it wasn't protected so yeah I'd say that's for uh, UV hardening uh, varnish interesting oh anyway let's power this up now that I know where everything is I also notice there's the, uh, that'll be the power button for the printer, but they've uh, taken a nice little bodge wire and gone to the back panel, actually. It goes up to this board here. Yeah. What's the pot? Oh, light adjustment. That would be going up to there. We have, yeah, power coming off USB for the light and potentiometer for, yeah, R2 for brightness. So I've got a variable brightness LED board. It's only got four on it, but it's a start. All right, let's activate power. We have activity. I don't have anything else connected at the moment. No, there we go. Reset. Yeah, 
So if this is out of home position, the reset button will bring it all back. Ink service. Nope. What are you hung up on? I don't want to get those, oh, even though they're insulated, I don't want to get those mains pins too close to the chassis. Um, one, yeah, yeah, it's not grounded. Hmm, that's not a good thing. Oh, wait, hang on, that blue wire is going to the power supply. It is grounded, it's just not green wire. I was thinking, hang on, why is there a, also a neutral wire coming off that ground pin? But it's grounded to the power supply itself, but whether or not that's grounded to the chassis, I don't know. Yeah, doesn't do much else. UV lamp on. Yep, that's working. No, that's backlight for the uh, camera. That won't work unless I have that plugged into a USB port. Yeah, UV's working. Don't know what I have that's UV sensitive. Oh, I do have a radiation source. Yeah, little tips on that switch do glow pretty good when they're under a UV. Not very well though, this one doesn't even make the Geiger counter tick. The one that makes it go off is uh, uh, one, one millirem per hour. And uh, it still works, but it's attached to a much bigger box, so I can't test it just yet. I'll pull that light out and have some fun with it later. Anyway, we know it doesn't do much, at least not without stimulation from a computer. I'm not even going to go that far. I just want to get it out of here, so let's butcher it for parts. Well, that's about all I'm getting out of that one. Oh, and the black light. That's electronically ballasted, just put 240 volts into it and it works. Power supply is 24 volts, 2.1 amps. Nice. Tiny little uh, panel mount one. Even You can almost put a DIN rail clip on the back of it and snap it onto a DIN rail. That's a little camera assembly and backlight. Head print head guide rod. Little linear slides, ball bearing slides. Remarkably smooth, really good. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> and a bunch of screws, as usual. Scoop them up, put them in the screw box. Yeah, these rails are cool. Well worth it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let's get back to normal programming. Wait, this is normal programming. <laughs> Thanks for watching another autopsy.